Okay, in this video, I want to show you how the jump to label instruction works. And this is an instruction that allows you to jump over a number of lines, or what we would refer to as a fenced zone. Okay, and these can be very useful. There are some tricks. Okay, it's similar to the MCR, which I have another video on, but there, there's, some, there's some main differences. The thing is, is that when you jump over a rung, everything just stays as it was. It doesn't turn anything off, okay? It will just ignore the rungs completely. So let me show you how this works. So again, I have a start-stop station here tied to these two, uh, these two instructions right here, going to a B3, and then I have a number of inputs here, two, three, four, and five, and I have them corresponding for ease, for just for the ease of the program, to these four out five, these four outputs right here. So when I turn this one on, three will come on. So let's go ahead and show you where the jump route, the jump to label instruction is. So you're going to scoot over, and this is just like it is in Ars Logics 500. I'm going to go to con Program Controls. I'm going to come right here to the jump. Okay, the jump to label. There's a jump to subroutine, which I'll have another video on here in a little bit. But I'll bring this down and tie it to this M this uh, B3. Does it have to be a B3? No, it could be anything. This jump to sub this jump to label could be attached to a done bit on a counter or a timer, a selector switch. You know, anything really, any input it can be tied to. Okay, and so notice this gives you the address of Q2 colon zero. They give you this in this program. In RS Logics 500, don't quote me, but I believe you have to type that in. It's a Q number, okay, and it goes to two there. Uh, so that's how it's identified. Then we need to put the label somewhere, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the label and I'm gonna put it in front of this line. Okay, and the label always goes on the front. It is an input. So what will happen is when I activate this, when I activate the jump, it will jump over two and three and it will start four and five. All right. Let me just run it for you so you can so uh, so you can see it. So download it. Hit the run instruction. Now, right now, okay, if I activate two, output two comes on. Input three, output three comes on four and five. Okay. Now, if I come here and I activate my jump, it's jumping over two and three. So if I activate two or three, it's ignoring it. It's not even seeing it. It's not scanning these. So, but it will activate four and five. Okay. So um, now here's where you have to be careful. All right, so let me go ahead and reset all these. My jump is on, so I'll turn my jump off. Let's say I have two activated and five activated. All right, so uh, three and four are off. So I come here, I activate my jump. So now I am jumping over two and three. Well, I can still control five, but if I come up to two and I disengage it, Notice my output is still on. And I can't turn on three. That's stuck off. So the hard part about, down, about using the jump to label instruction is that you have to make sure that everything is in the proper state before you decide to jump over things. There's also can be some serious scan time issues with trying to jump into another jump fenced zone or jumping backwards and that can cause some scan time issues which can be really really hard to overcome i have a lot of i've known a lot of people who try to use the jump to label instruction with varying degrees of success okay i want you to understand how to use it so if you see it in a factory you can uh, you can understand what they're doing Trying to program it right off the scratch does take a lot of experience with this particular instruction. All right, thanks for watching the video.